Hey, Tigre here with Tech with Tigre. I wanted to go through and show you how to do a Photoshop button that mirrors what's happening on a website. So best practices for a website, if we want to inspect the element, this is on Lola Pickett's page for SoulSpeak for communication for empaths, in case you're curious. And on this button right now, we've got a couple of things going on. We've got box shadow that's happening and what I want to show is how to recreate basically this box shadow approach. A UI design that people like to see happen is the button colors, shadow being the same as the button color, and also slightly smaller. And that's what you get in the HTML for this, I mean the CSS for this with box shadow. So you're saying that I'm going to move the shadow down 12 pixels because that's the y-axis. I'm going to blur it by 18 pixels, and then I'm going to give it a negative 6 pixel, pixel inset. And so this is then the color for RGBA with the alpha being at 0.37. So if you were to create your button in Photoshop, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose a rounded rectangle tool because that was a four picks radius or two picks. So what I'm doing is I pressed U, went to rounded rectangle, go up to shape, make sure it's on shape, and we've drawn our shape. It'll even tell it rounded rectangle, so I'm going to name this raspberry button and press escape so we get off of it. We'll zoom in. So now we got our button. So this radius is a little short, so what I'm going to do is ramp it up and put it back to 8 pixels. Feels slightly softer, really to match my style, I'm about a 4 on mine, but you can adjust it however you want under the properties for that. Now, if I were to just double click and do the layer style for a drop shadow and choose the same color and distance, what did we say that was? Distance was 12 with an 18 blur. So let's do a distance of 12. We're gonna do 90 degrees. And then we're gonna do a size of 18. And we just set spread to zero. It's pretty close, but we're not getting that negative inset. We can see that the blur is happening around the edge. And so that's that's one way to do that. Let's do Command J to duplicate. We'll keep this one. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clear the layer style, and now I'm going to convert to Smart Object. So now it's our Raspberry button. This is our solid. I'm going to duplicate that, grab the bottom one. So we're going to name this one Shadow, and we're going to name this one Solid. And that way, what I can do with the button shadow is I'm going to shift down, that's 10 pixels, go down two more pixels, and then I'm going to go command T, and then we can just shrink it by 85%. Now let's go up a little bit higher. Let's do like right about there, 95, say 95%, because we're also going to feather it in, so it'll disappear a little bit. So that's our shadow right now. Now what we can do is can go filter and apply a smart filter to it and go under blur, Gaussian blur, you could choose whichever blur you want. Do a Gaussian blur and then let's put that 18 pixels. There's our nice color. We have a little bit of bleed on the side, but that's fine because what we can do if we don't want any bleed coming off the side, smart filters don't render when you're in transform. There it goes. I can drop it down a little bit more. And then I can play with the opacity if I want to soften the intensity. So I can do like 77, do 66. And now our button has a slightly different effect than what, than what we got going on with this. The nice part is then if I want to change this raspberry button for the shadow and the solid. Like this is a group. Let's grab these together. Put them at green. Now, let's take that one away again. So we have that one, right? Convert to new smart object via copy. Let's say, let's make this a blue button solid. And then I'll do a command J, duplicate that. Now this is going to be my shadow again. And now what I can do is I can 
do command F for filter or option command F to apply the Gaussian blur on that one. So we got that and then I'm also going to set it to copy layer style, paste layer style. So now it's at 66 as well. We'll move these out of the way so that we can see this. Now for right now there, it's still the raspberry color, right? But what I want to do is get this down. We said it was 89.55. <laughs> copy that, escape one more time, go to the shadow, command T, make sure it's linked, paste it in there. Um, one, one, two, one, two, three, four. So that's 16 pixels down right now. Now, if I go into this object and I change this, I can snag, let's say it's aqua, right? Oops, I forgot, you have to grab up in there. Come on. This is one of the annoying things, Photoshop doesn't allow you to click in multiple places. It'd be great if it did that. So we do that, save it, close. Now the shadow auto updates and it's all set. So I could use uh, aqua or teal button with the drop shadow and do everything else. And then you could just add in your text. Start today. Now this text is gonna be a little bit wider. So I'll shrink that down. And then what you could do too within this is you can say, oh, that's not the right size. All right, we'll double click that. Command C, something with my canvas size is jacked up, so I'm just gonna go into C and expand it out that way. And now what I can do is expand my button, save that, close that. My button's expanded. My shape and shadow is gonna match it as well because they're the same smart object. So now I've got a way of making my button look closer to what we've got going on in a web environment. So thank you very much for watching Tech with Tigre. Hopefully that tutorial was very helpful for you in creating a web style button in Photoshop. Subscribe and learn more and I'll be posting more updates as I create them. Thank you very much.